What's up everybody, it's Josh here at Andrew White Guitars and first of all, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that like button and also feel free to leave a comment. Why not? It's good for everybody. So today we're going to talk about left hand technique. I got an email from somebody and they were asking, well, uh, how thick is your guitar's neck? I have small hands. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is my hands are about as average as possible if you were to measure them, which I have because why? I don't know. Hand size, everything is exactly average, five foot ten, whatever. Um, so I'm not, I'm not a, like a freak of nature like Steve Vai who has gigantic hands or Alan Holdsworth or Jimi Hendrix. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm working with basically what everybody else is working with, according to statistics. Um, so what I want to talk about is getting used to the neck carve on different guitars. Every guitar feels a little bit different. All of our necks are basically the same carve, the same feel, but every guitar brand, every manufacturer, and even sometimes different guitars for different manufacturers are going to have a different kind of neck, a different feel, a different neck carve. For me, I like to appreciate the, how unique each carve is and, and you know, experiment with different guitars for different feels, different sounds, you get different ideas. So one thing that I try to keep consistent is my left hand technique and how I approach playing on the guitar and that allows me to appreciate like, wow, this has a really old feeling 50s Les Paul neck or this has a really strange V carve like a Strat from the 50s, you know? Um, if, if your technique is solid and you're comfortable with the way that you play with your left hand and you're using your left hand in the most efficient way that you can, the most mechanically proper way that you can, you shouldn't have any trouble playing any guitar, really, unless you have especially small hands or that guitar is just really not set up to be played in such a way, which, who makes those guitars? So anyway, uh, let's take a close look at my left hand and I'll try and give you a few different angles, help you out with your left hand technique so that no guitar, within reason, is going to be tough for you to play. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is your thumb and your thumb placement. So the first thing I want you to try to do is first take your hand like this. All right, notice how your thumb sticks out naturally like this, all right? For guitar, it's gonna be almost like you're holding a ball in your hand is basically the technique, all right? And your thumb around back, you can use it to swivel this way or this way depending on what chords or scales or whatever you're playing, all right? So my thumb's in the same spot, I'm just kind of using it as a hinge to swivel back and forth like that. All right? The next thing, I always keep my thumb as much as possible across from my middle and index fingers, just like that. You can kind of see it in the window. I'm trying really hard not to call this my rule of thumb, but I guess I just did. You can swivel, you can stretch your fingers out like this. So use that to your advantage, and that's all staying in one position. This is my range of motion, basically, and my thumb is basically stuck here at the second fret the whole time. All right, and I'll give you some different angles of that. The next little bit of advice that I have for you is, unless you are using a bar to play your chords, or to do, you know, if you're into sweep arpeggios and stuff, unless you're using a bar, Use the very tips of your fingers. Here, let me press down and I'll show you. Now, I'm just pressing down in position. One finger on each fret, just to show you that this is basically where your fingers, or at least where my fingers, are able to get here in open position, all right? Oh, wow, the sun is going to town right now. And you can kind of see where it's made the lines across my fingers. You want to be playing with the tips of your fingers unless you're doing a bar. And this helps to 
basically keep your tone really nice. To make a long story short, you're barring and you're using the fleshy part of your finger or when you're, if you were to play really flat to play your scales. To me, even the notes that are coming through clearly are muffled compared to playing on the tips. an immediate difference. The other thing this will do, you can't, there's, I mean, there's just no way that you're gonna be able to play a C chord and flatten your fingers out, right? That, that's not a chord, really. Okay, so if you're using the tips of your fingers, all right, you can play that C chord. Now, that brings me to the next thing. Pay attention to this space right here in your hand. All right, there needs to be space there. You don't want to hold your guitar like a baseball bat, like this. All right, that's gonna also cut off certain notes. You can't, you can't get to them. And plus, it's putting a ton of tension, like right there. You can pretty much see that. All right, so relax. <laughs> get some space in your hands. And honestly, start working. On, if you're a dead beginner, start working on single notes before you ever try to do a chord. All right. And we're gonna do this little exercise too. So while we do this exercise, keep, remember, keep your thumb in one position, all right? Keep it out on a swivel across from your middle and index fingers. And if you do this exercise, it should pretty much work itself out naturally to be in this position. Play on your fingertips, keep that space, all right? And we are gonna go one, two, three, all right, there are a couple things to do with this exercise. First, keep, try to keep your fingers over the frets that they're about to play so that they can just come down like a typewriter. All right, play one at a time, and as you play each note, lift the last one up. All right, and at the same time, Focus on making a smooth transition between each note, between each note, so none of this. All right, each note rings into the next. It'll take some time to get to that point if you are just a beginner, all right? But notice, look at my hand here. All right, now my thumb's gonna stay in the same spot even when I travel upwards through the guitarist strings. And you can basically do any permutation of this exercise that you would like. Whatever works, but the thing you want to focus on at first is getting this technique. Uh, getting your hands in the proper position. All right, that's all really nice, right? But we know that there are exceptions to the rules, right? So um, not all the time when I'm playing scales or chords will I be able to keep my hand in this, we'll call it the optimum position or our home position, right? It's just not practical. So when we need to travel outside of that really comfortable position, we need to keep in mind some of the lessons that we learned earlier. First. And I think the main one is the swivel. So just like for certain chords, like here's a regular D chord. Here's the D chord from Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. My thumb's in the same spot, right? But here my wrist has changed its angle and its position, all right? So keep, keep that in mind. The same will apply for certain scales. So when I play a pentatonic scale, for example, to play it, for me to play it quickly, I have to do some weird stuff, okay? And um, I picked this up from one of the sweetest guitar players ever, Sean Lane, right? When he plays his pentatonic scales, he uses just these three fingers, and he uses a stretch between these that is not what is common for us. But all it takes is to adjust your hand a little bit, use it on a swivel like this. So let me show you what I mean with that pentatonic scale. 
All right, so I'm just going to show you in, you know, the, the pentatonic box that we're all familiar with, all right? So if we were to keep that four, four fret spread, like we do from the one, two, three, four exercise, it would be like this. My problem is I'm not super clean with those fingers um, and doing two note per string scales. So what helps me is my thumb again is in the same spot. I just angle it, angle my hand a little bit more like this. And I use to my ring, then to my middle, then to my ring for sequences. Um, If I were to just go straight up and down the scale, I would just play it like this. And when I do sequences, I play it like this. Something similar like that. Depending on the sequence. All right? And the way that I'm able to make such a... It looks like a really uncomfortable stretch, but honestly, it's not once you get used to it. Once you get... If, as long as you're keeping your thumb right there. All right, so that's one way to, that we break the rules as far as how to hold our guitar and stretch our hand. The other way that we do it is with chords. So let's think about under the bridge again, um, just for simplicity's sake, and because you go from having this proper like classical guitar technique here. having that really proper classical technique for this chord down here, which you literally have to have to be able to play it, um, to playing like Jimi Hendrix played immediately after for the verse. So you go for this chord, then you do this chord. So you're using your thumb down here, and you're basically breaking every rule that I told you in the first place, uh, which is awesome. I love breaking rules, right? It's it's uh, it's rebellious. It's rebellion. It's rock and roll, right? All right. So that's fine. You know, you don't have to listen to anything I tell you about how to play the guitar, really. Just, but I'm just gonna make it easier for you. So you might as well check this out. So, um, so when I when I break those rules, I break them pretty hard. All right. So this. This chord, we are doing the baseball bat grip. That's the only way to do this. All right? All right? Right there from chord to chord, you're going from good technique to wild. All right? So yeah, when I'm using my thumb to fret the note, I'm using like right there, because that's... <laughs> That's where I have to because that's where my thumb reaches physically. Um, it's different for everybody. Everybody's got different sized hands, and Hendrix could do this easily because, I mean, wow, just like a freak of nature, right? And he's the one that patented these chords that John Frusciante's using in uh, the song. So, um, yeah. Anyway, it, it's it's a similar thing. Um, you you kind of want to. It's actually the opposite of the swivel of of using the techniques I showed you, the swivel, that that's really like having proper technique and really... It's really doing your best to make it easy on yourself. This is... This is only... only good for... I mean, you have to do it to play Hendrix. You have to do it to play this song. But other than that, it's not like... This is something that would have been idiomatic to Jimmy playing. Um, not us, or at least not me, with my regular hands. Um, so just keep that in mind. Every, like I said, everybody is a little bit different. All right, hopefully this video helped you out uh, with your left hand technique, and hopefully you'll be able to play whatever guitar you want now um, and have fun with it. So we all do have certain physical limitations. There are certain things that I won't be able to play because my hands are not big enough. But um, you, 
you shouldn't have that problem with most guitars. If you're mindful of your hand and your technique, unless, unless you get something that is built very, very, very strange or is just, uh, or if maybe you have just really like hands that only come to here, that's fine. It happens. Um, and find a way to use that to your advantage as a guitar player. You know? Same way that people with gigantic hands use that to their advantage. Anyway, hope that was easy. Hopefully that helped out. Uh, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Let us know how you liked it. Let us know if there's any content that you want to see in the future. And I will catch you next time. All right, everybody, I do want to mention that I do give guitar lessons through our website, andrewyguitars.com. Just scroll over to the lessons part of the website, and you'll see me. Just book a lesson. I can help out whether you're a beginner, um, if you're a more advanced player. We can take where you are and grow and become even greater. So let's have some fun. Take it easy.